Hello. Uh, it's time to talk about integrity constraints. Uh, we've talked about them briefly before. Uh, we're going to cover them in a little bit more detail this time. Uh, I think integrity constraints are really important. Uh, and the reason integrity constraints are so important is that basically this is a way that you get to set up your database and the database watches the data that's coming in and the way that you're using the database way that you're using your database and you're saying you know the data that comes in or the way i use it has to be like this otherwise i must be making a mistake and how could you ever make a mistake? Well, you're uh, going to write programs and you're going to be running queries and things. And we all make mistakes, but the integrity constraint is there and says, uh oh, no, I'm not going to allow that because you told me in advance not to allow you to do that. I mean, it's kind of like, a, you know, it's like a safety device. You know, it's there to protect you. So when it's not hard to use the safety device, put it in place and it's going to protect you from shooting yourself in the foot. All right. Uh, I, I, I'm a big believer in that because in particular, uh, there are things that only can be done nicely and neatly in the database to ensure things. Again, this goes back now to like the transactions. It's aware of various integrity constraints that you put on your database. And as you try to do things, it, it, it takes that into consideration with the transactions and they work together uh, so that you can't do things that are wrong. Uh, now, this doesn't mean it's going to prevent you from using your database wrong, but it, it catches a lot of simple mistakes that you might make. Um, these are all that when we make them, they're part of when we create the table. Okay. Uh, and again, we can just look up the syntax for creating tables. We'll be creating tables when we get to Rails. Uh, so the, the true syntax details are not something at the moment I care about. It's the conceptual understanding of the types of constraints that we could put on things and the utility of doing so. All right. So we've already talked about one, which is um, the nice notion of being able to set an attribute to not null. And so again, this means when you declare an attribute for a table, not null, the attribute is not allowed to be set to null. And again, you would likely not to make it do this on, not to set it to null on purpose. You might do it by mistake. You forget on an insert to have a column and so you leave that column off if without the not null and null will be put in for you for any columns you did not specify on the insert so you can see already like that's the type of thing that's going to be like aha whoo you saved me so much trouble all right uh the next one you can define a set of attributes to be unique so attribute one, attribute two, on up to however many attributes you have on that uh, table, okay? Uh, what you're basically doing here is saying that these attributes taken together are forming a super key. And as such, uh, do, I'll call them dupes or duplicate rows with those attributes uh, are not allowed. Uh, we'll stick in rows here, but it's for those attributes in a row, uh, rows are not allowed. And so the database would catch you. Uh, and if you tried to put in, so let's say you say, oh, well, I have an attribute here and it's supposed to be unique. If you put it and you already have that value in in one row, you try to put in another row in, the database will catch that and say that statement is in error and won't allow you to make that mistake where you put in two rows with that same uh, information. Um, be careful uh, because uh, 
if you have nulls and you allow them, which again, I advise against it, I advise using not null, but if you have a null, uh, and, you know, this is considered not a violation of the uniqueness. And so you really do want to combine the notion of unique uh, with not null. So if you're saying, oh yeah, I'm going to have these attributes be unique, they're basically, again, they're going to form a super key for this uh, table. Wait, uh, yeah, you should probably be also declaring all of them to be not null. Otherwise, you could insert uh, rows with nulls and it, they're not going to violate the, the uniqueness issue is my understanding. Um, now in Rails, we can't just do this unique uh, thing. And so uh, in Rails, to enforce uniqueness, uh, what we do is we create uh, a unique index on the columns that we want. Okay, we'll talk about indexes uh, later. Uh, usually this is a good thing because uh, if we're saying these things are supposed to be unique, basically saying they're a super key, that likely means those also are keys, those are columns that we're going to use as a key to query that table with. Well, when we're going to query a table, especially as those tables get large in size, having an index is great. It'll speed up our access to the rows in that table. So I can see the way Rails doesn't provide any way for us to do this, uh, since it's probably geared towards, well, obviously you'd want an index, wouldn't you? So you can create a unique index to enforce that uniqueness uh, constraint at the database level. All right, then there's also the notion of a check constraint. Uh, some of you have seen the check constraint already in the university database as loaded into Codio. Uh, some of you ran into it because you made it all the way to a problem on the homework that used it. And then we had to change that problem on the homework. Uh, so the check constraint, the nice thing what it can do is it can go ahead and it can check values uh, to see if they meet conditions. All right, so these are along the lines, uh, you know, you can do things like, you know, you can check to see if things are greater than equal, so forth and so on. Uh, look up the details. Uh, one example that we had uh, was, oh, this table with courses in it and they had a certain number of credits and the database has a check constraint that says, well, the number of credits must always be greater than zero. So we are not going to allow you to make a course and say it has zero or negative number of credits. Again, you wouldn't purposely do that, but here you have a situation where, ah, yes, if I was to make a mistake writing my program and attempt to do that, now I've caught that mistake and I won't, I won't introduce bad data into the database. All right. Uh, the next one is the notion, and we have talked about this one, call it again, referential integrity. This is where we are specifying what the foreign keys are. And so you would have in the create, when you create a table and you would say, oh yeah, this, this attribute I have here, uh, what you do is you say, yeah, I have a foreign key and then you name what the attribute is and you say it references uh, the other table, the origin table. So what it, the, the 
check the integrity constraint is when you try to insert something into the table that's got a foreign key uh, referential integrity check on it, this value you try to put into this attribute, whatever it is, the value must exist in the table. Okay. Um, and so this is the call, actually, this is the column name that's in this table. Um, I believe I have that right. Uh, either way, we could find, look up this text to be absolutely positive. But the key idea is when I say, ah, in this table that I'm creating, this thing is a foreign key. What I'm saying is, is make sure that when I try to put something into this table, that that key value is found over there in that table for that attribute. If not, don't let me do it because I need to know that I would be able to link together these tables because I'm using the foreign key to do that linkage. Um, if, if, there's, if this key doesn't exist in the other table, I must be making a mistake. What does it mean to, to, to have something that I can't link? That's what you're doing is when you create one of these uh, things. Now, note that you can also set these up. Uh, these can be set up with what is known as a uh, on delete cascade uh, statement. And what you're doing here when you're doing that, that basically that's saying, uh, you know, if the key in that table is deleted, then delete me. Okay, so, oh yeah. Hey database, I've got this table. It's got a foreign key. So I reference, this key is referencing this other table. If that other table deletes that key from itself, come and find me and delete my row that has that matching value. So often you're gonna see this in some sort of scenario where uh, you have, you know, yes, I, I have, uh, you know, some, some sort of owner, and then let's say some, something that owns or is responsible for some other subcomponent. And so this subcomponent references whatever the owner is of it. Well, when, if that owner was to disappear, be deleted, we should get rid of the subcomponent as well because it's the subcomponent is only there because of the owner. Um, you know, you might decide, you know, maybe you have some posts and you've got uh, some posts that are replies or who knows what, what, you know, there's all sorts of things that you could envision. Or let's say you have comments on a post. Well, if the post is deleted, the comments should disappear as well. Um, but beware of this, okay? Uh, you might say, this is great, this is handy, but you know, basically, uh, if not used wisely, it can easily result in loss of data. So consider, let's say I set up a book database and I have uh, an author and I have books. So an author table and a books table. And the books table has a foreign key into the author table. So each book has an author uh, and that author then we would find in the author's table. If I set that, set that up with an on delete cascade, what I'm saying is, well, if I delete the author, go delete all the books that have that as the author. Is that really what I want to do? Do I really want to have to go and input all that data again? Maybe what I'm really doing is uh, I need to do something where I'm going to get rid of an author and replace them or something, you know. I really should be editing it, but maybe I don't. But if you're not wise about this, a uh, delete of one table can cascade through a whole series of all these other tables, deleting all the data that has all those foreign keys. And the next thing you know is, oh, I have a real problem. If you don't do the on delete cascade, what will happen when, let's say, take that author in the book example. If I try to delete that author, it will say, 
I'm sorry, you can't do that. That books table has you as a foreign key. So if you, I was to delete you, I would mess up the referential integrity. I will not allow you to do that. If you want to get rid of that author, first you're going to have to go and delete all those books, and then you can come back and delete that author. Uh, and that sort of is a nice thing in, from the standpoint of protecting yourself. Ooh, do I, did I really want to cause all these deletes to happen? I mean, this is why we're putting, one of the reasons we're putting in the referential uh, constraint is to make sure that things stay, that the integrity is good. You could maintain it with an on-delete cascade, but you also might be really surprised. Oh, I had no idea it would delete so much data from the database. So watch out when setting these up. And perhaps more importantly, you go off on co-op or you're at your job and you're using a database. Uh, be aware, they might have on-delete cascades set up. And if you're not careful with your delete, you could end up deleting a lot of data. So you have to really understand the ins and outs of the database that you're using and how it is set up and what is the proper, proper way to do it. Whenever, whenever it comes around to deleting stuff, check, double check, triple check. Like once the data is gone, you're, you're in deep doo-doo. Um, sure, there might be a backup, but there might not be. So think twice before deleting. Double check stuff. All right, that's it for looking at uh, integrity constraints. Yeah, all right.